this is uh, you guys you're gonna turn red this is horrible so derek chauvin the ex-officer charged with murder in george floyd's case was released on a one million dollar bond he was released wednesday on a conditional release and is expected to appear in court in march of next year this reporting's out of nbc news i'm of course as always not going to read you the whole thing but i'll give you the gist so Chauvin is facing murder and manslaughter charges after video showed him kneeling on Floyd's neck for about eight minutes. And side note, if, if you guys have attended these, the protests for, for George Floyd, you may have seen where the protesters kneel for eight minutes in silence. It is it really shows you exactly how long eight minutes is. It is eerie. You get chills in those moments. It's just uh, there are no words. So this was on uh, May, May 25th. Um, Chauvin was released Wednesday again on conditional release. And um, more background, four officers were terminated from the department and charged in Floyd's death, which sparked protests over racial injustice across the globe. Chauvin himself is charged with second degree murder and manslaughter and faces up to 40 years in prison if convicted of second degree murder. And you know what? Actually, John off camera, when we were talking about this, he said, you know, I wonder if when they put these guys in jail like put these cops in jail if there's a, a side note like hey don't worry about it like you're gonna go to jail for a little while it'll be all right but we'll get you out that seems to be exactly what happened in this case yeah well this is by design i mean this is always how they do it like they always make sure that whenever these officers or the charges are brought against them which i mean what's the statistic it's like 99 percent never face any consequences they always make sure and, and then the consequences people do face it's like are they con their consequences so i mean they always make sure that they wait enough that the public outrage has ceased a little bit because there's bound to be another shooting unfortunately so they're just like okay by the time the public has i don't want to say forgotten about it but by the time the public has moved on to the next atrocity then we'll kind of give this a stay in court so that the public outcry isn't there. It's by design. I mean, that, and, and we just see another example of it unfolding. That's why they're saying we're not going to do anything till March. Absolutely. And it's to remind everyone the reason that the cops were there in any case was because there was a report that George Floyd had used a, 20, a counterfeit $20 bill. And because of that, which it may not even have been counterfeit, because of that, because of racism, George Floyd is dead today. And it, it really um, makes me so furious when I think back to the multiple interviews I've done with Trump supporters who, when you ask them about George Floyd, they'll say, oh, he had fentanyl in his system. Oh, he had a record. I don't care. Since when are cops judge, jury, and executioner? Like, because he had a counterfeit $20 bill, you racist assholes think it's okay for him to be murdered? That's not that's not how our country works for you people who are so obsessed with the Constitution. And it's also a very clear case of racism. There's, it's disgusting. Plus, you know, this is not a situation where the cops should ever be called, really. Yes. I mean, so, so let's say he did have a counterfeit $20 bill. Why should the cops be called in that? So there's no reason for it. It's like, hey, this is, uh, I mean, it happens all the time where someone may have a counterfeit bill that they got at some point that, you know, whatever. Just because you have a, you don't need, hang on. Oh, yeah. Just right. because you have a, <laughs> just because you have a counterfeit bill doesn't mean you printed it and are aware that it's counterfeit. I mean, how many times have they pulled out counterfeit bills in Las Vegas, for example, from gamblers that had no idea they were given a counterfeit bill, which is really quite common. So to assume that that's a reason whatsoever to justify any sort of violence, let alone murder, is absolutely asinine. Yeah, I mean, if I ever have a counterfeit bill, I know where it came from, Tina Stryer, and that's just, <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. That's true. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why are you telling people I print fake money in my basement? You said it was a joke. So. <laughs> now, they're, now they're off your trail. They don't know anymore. <laughs> it's good. Do you know what I find really interesting, though, and I, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on this. It's interesting to me how often when you talk to these Trump folks, when you interview them, they actually think they're moral. They actually think they're good people, and they actually think they're doing, like, just things in the world. You know what I'm saying? Their their sense of, of what's what it is to be a humanitarian is just distorted. How did How did they get to that place, do you think? 
that's one of the questions that I am I really struggle with. I studied psychology in college and I'm I've always been fascinated with trying to figure people out, you know, what makes people tick, what makes them do bad things. And I I've never found the answer. And I never will. I I truly cannot figure out how someone becomes a person. We were talking about this the other day, like a person who's able to do really bad things for money or a person who's who truly thinks that they are superior because they have white skin. I, I don't, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I, I think in the, the case of Trump supporters, it's a true indoctrination. I, I've read a book called The Cult of Donald Trump. I think that's what its title is. And that was really fascinating. Um, Trump has a lot of of elements that kind of make up a cult leader, even in the way that he speaks, the way he presents himself, the way that his um, sympathizers react to him. So I think there's a lot of um, brainwashing going on. I also think that people have so much maybe trauma in their in their lives or they were raised a certain way or they had something happen to them that set them down a certain path but then once they're down this path they go further and further and further right. so i i don't know because i mean they really do see themselves as morally just well i think if you want to look at it in the electoral sense too we have this uh weird notion in the United States, and I feel like it's in the world too, but, but I think maybe in particular here because, you know, we all grew up on comic books and it was after they passed that ordinance that comic books have to be rah-rah America where people think there's always a good guy and a bad guy. And when you look around electorally, there's, there's a lot of bad guys. There's just a lot of bad stuff. And usually, you know, when I tweet something about Trump, which I, I tweet about Trump, I tweet about Biden, I tweet about the system as a whole, um, I tweet about all of it, and I don't haul, hail any of them as good guys, you know, but a lot of times when I, I tweet about Trump, you know, somebody will tweet something unflattering about Biden, which my first response is, you must not know me that well, if you think that's a counter to me, but second right. of all, like, you know, again, you're raised with this thing where it's like there's a good guy and a bad guy, and well, here's, here's an uncomfortable message, there are no good guys there are no good guys. The bad guy is our entire system. Our entire system, it's an oligarchy. I agree with that too, and we were also talking about this the other day. I think it takes a certain level of psychopathy for most of these politicians to do what they do. And I think the same is true of CEOs of major corporations, multinational corporations. You have to have a certain way to turn off your empathy to make the decisions that you're making because it's so obvious to us, for example, like that's immoral, that's against what it is to be a human being or should be at least like there should be like I was saying the other night we might not be able to define clearly what wrongness is but we sort of if we're if we're a complete human being we sort of recognize wrongness when we see it right it just doesn't feel good like that's sort of something I think that's slightly innate but these guys have a certain level of psychopathy where they don't have that sort of thing that's telling them this is wrong this is immoral this is harmful I should not do that I should think about this person as someone that's connected to me. Like, you know, that just doesn't exist in those worlds. And I, so I think that on a certain level, politics attracts that sort of personality. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think you're right. I think it, do, it takes a certain personality to, to believe that you are someone who can win and best serve. So that takes a certain type of person, and then it ends up being... You know. Well, and it's a system where <laughs> mediocrity is rewarded. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's, when you look at our... Less uh, is that. And, you know, hey, Pete Buttigieg wrote an mm. essay about that when he was 18 years old. He wrote an essay about, you know, Bernie Sanders, and he basically laid out... I mean, I read that essay, and it's very telling, because what it really tells you is... He knows the difference between being a good guy and a bad guy, and he chose to be a bad guy. Yeah. He actually knew better. He doesn't just think, well, this is just the way it is. He knows better, it and worse. it does make it worse. But it, it, but it is true what he wrote, where, where it's like, if you want to just take the donor money, be the blank suit, let the special interest fill up that blank suit, you're going to have a nice 40-year career where, hey, Joe Biden might, you know, Lauren Ashcraft uh, said this first, to my knowledge, he might be able to fail his way up to the presidency. Mm. Um, but if you take the long road, um, you know, no one's going to know who you are until you're about close to 80 years old, like a Bernie yeah. Sanders. Yeah. Or you're going to get redistricted, like a Dennis Kucinich. Mm -hmm. That's the system. Because yeah. so, Ron and I do philosophy. 
So what bothers me about oh, that, though. Does us, dear. <laughs> <laughs> it ruined us. It ruined us. It did. But here's the thing. How do you put your head on your pillow at night and sleep if that's the way you're functioning? If that's really the only thing that matters to you, you have no sense of integrity, no commitment to veracity, no idea of connectedness. Like the things that I'm concerned are willing to, to be something to fight for if you're a human being. Those things go out the window in pursuit of what? Profit? Profit through a certain level of, of um, attainment that's viewed as, as good by society but isn't necessarily a public good? You know what I'm saying? We'll see what comes next, but it really seems to me that true justice, if that could even exist in this case, which I don't think it could, no, it, even, even uh, the, um, like, uh, even the smallest amount of justice, is, it seems like it's not going to happen. So part and parcel to the problem is the district attorney's office is so interconnected with the police force, right? They are part of the same fraternal organization. They work so closely together. They defend each other. So I think the only way we're ever going to get any start to see any real justness from any of these situations is if we take these prosecutions of police officers away from the DA's office. That's my personal opinion. We have to totally restructure the system. I mean, because it's like, I mean, we just we just described all the ways, like, how this is designed to shield the corrupt, reward the corrupt, and, and, and the entire, our, our entire policing system. It can't be reformed. That ship sailed long ago. It, we need to completely reinvent it. We need to defund. We need to demilitarize. We need to just start over again. When you really think about the job of a police officer as it exists now, it's a completely ridiculous... Why should the same person who responds to a noise violation also have to respond to a live shooting? That makes zero sense. How does that make society safer? It doesn't. We should have special designations. Like, like we need to completely reinvent what law enforcement means in our life. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Stop.